I want to know your story. What inspired you to come up with a space company? I started OrbitX for the primary reason of providing space access for uh, not just uh, developing countries, but, but also startups here in Southeast Asia. In order for us to have a sustainable future also, we decided to make sure that fuel that will be used for every space launch will come from waste. And what's the process like? Yeah, uh, actually, with regards to that, we are utilizing, uh, like what I said, waste like uh, waste oils. We are, we, we are also utilizing uh, uh, waste plastics. So that we are uh, the the primary idea of not of uh, Orbitex is not just to go to space, but uh, prevent uh, or or protect the planet in the long period of time because it is the only habitable planet that we have. So that we, we know for now. For now, for now. <laughs> but maybe in the future, yeah, I, I agree on that. But maybe on the future we can discover. Uh, other civilizations like Mars and Venus and uh, but for now we need to make sure that the earth will be protected because uh, the uh, the uh, vision of going to other planets and uh, and uh, basically stay there is still a long journey on our part as an aerospace company we are making it sure that uh, we are not just doing something for space but also uh, protecting Earth in the long period of time. What's the actual process you're implementing? Oh yeah, uh, with regards to overall sustainability, with regards to uh, the entire process, uh, the invention process and the management process, here in Southeast Asia, um, it is really challenging to do, especially that this is, uh, this is one of the newest type of ventures here in Southeast Asia because it is not common. Unlike, uh, unlike in America, unlike in European countries like, uh, uh, like Germany and other countries, he, this is a new stuff here in Southeast Asia. And uh, with regards to that, the entire process of inventing a new thing that will work is really challenging, like what I said, so it uh, so it took us about a year to discover what is the best way to make sure that we will be able to do this, and uh, we consulted a lot of people, especially with the government, to make sure that this will happen. And uh, it is also uh, it is also our advantage that the government decided to put up Philippine Space Agency, which is a new one here in the Philippines. And uh, it is also a concern here in the Philippines when the government decided to create a space agency because we have other problems here. And according to a lot of citizens, my fellow Filipino citizens, going into space should not be included. So I argued that the real benefit of Earth, uh, the real be benefit of space is here on Earth. So as a developing country, we need to make sure also that we have access to space because space brings a lot of breakthrough technologies that is necessary to make sure that, for example, we are uh, monitoring the climate and uh, we are also uh, monitor uh, monitoring calamities and improving our defense technologies. That's why we are very, uh, not, not so close, but working relatively close to the government. And uh, with regards to our other projects, they are very uh, supportive on that. But with regards to the financial terms giving us grants, here in the Philippines, we still have problems with regards to giving grants to pioneering, uh, pioneering uh, technologies and inventions and, initi and initiatives. That's the reason why the only thing that the government can provide to us is access to networks and also talent or ma manpower and uh, with regards to partnership with regards to um, uh, creating new technologies we, we also have another hurdle on that 
and uh, the, the primary reason why it is a hurdle here in the Philippines because it is really sad that the government do not have a proper intellectual property policy for inventors. Uh, basically, they are willing to work with the entrepreneur or the inventor but the main concern is that they want the technology to be accessible to the entire public even for the comp even for the competition mm -hmm. so that's the primary concern here in the philippines which is challenging that's why we are we decided to work closely with the different government agencies here in the philippines to make sure that we are voicing our concerns with regards to the technologies that we are uh, getting involved too. But I yes. would love to know uh, who you work with to make this happen. Actually, we are working close to the Philippine Space Agency. Uh, they are uh, they are still on the initial works with regards to the transition of power because uh, the law was signed last year, uh, August 2019, last year, and the transition program, uh, the transition of power took place recently during COVID period. The sad thing about that is that um, when, when we ask Philippine Space Agency for guidelines with regards to uh, commercial space flight company, they even told us that we will still, they, will, they told us that they will still wait for us to become established so that we can discuss together the guidelines. Uh, on, on our part, it is a privilege to be working together with a new agency that is tackling uh, space technologies. But it is also sad to see uh, a Philippine government agency that is still relying in pub uh, private industries, which is not, uh, in, my in my own opinion, it is not good because in countries like uh, United States, NASA is the one who is giving guidelines for uh, space-related startups. But I guess this is already a good start for the Philippines. And with regards to the technology, financing concerns, it is tough on our part, especially when we are trying to approach international investors because Philippines has no track record with regards to launching uh, launching uh, space launch vehicles. And uh, that is a hurdle that we are trying to break. Here in the Philippines, the, the priority startups are those involved in digital technologies, financial technologies. We are not that involved in funding deep technology ventures or moonshot technologies. So even though even though the project is for Filipinos and for developing countries, not, not, uh, not just for the Philippines, it is, it is really unfortunate to hear that the opportunities are coming from abroad. For example, like this interview, we are much being heard from other countries outside the Philippines instead of being supported inside our own country. Being heard in your own country is really important, especially mm -hmm. that you are doing something not just for yourself, but for the betterment of your own country. And uh, someday if this venture will succeed, we are carrying the flag of the Philippines. Why do you think that is? Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of factors to consider, especially that here in the Philippines we have uh, we have uh, a well known uh, phenomena of uh, that that we can call corruption. At the same time, the political will is not yet that strong to support hard tech ventures or deep tech ventures like this. So, pr primarily. Um, the culture of every Filipino is different from having a mindset like this that is similar to a Western mindset of doing moonshot things or marshat things. And uh, 
maybe that is the reason why Filipinos or the even the Philippine government is having a hard time figuring out how they will be able to support us. Do you think collaborations with other countries could help? We must be well connected to one another. Yeah. And uh, co collaboration plays a huge part on that. And uh, having, having space industry as a future industry, future booming industry in the world, every country must collaborate and connect with one another. And with regards to our own experience, that is what we are experiencing. But the primary hurdle that we are experiencing, the pri primary challenge that we are experiencing is that we cannot, uh, we cannot do connections easily abroad if we are not being supported by our government. Because in my own belief, as the executive and the founder of this team, this family that I created, I personally believe that in order for us to maximize our impact in the community, everything must start in your local community and in in and in our part, on our part, it must start here in the Philippines before we connect abroad. Because even though the international collaboration is good, the first benefactor or the first beneficiary must be the local country or the country that you are from because you will not uh, as a filipino company you will not be launching in japan for example although you can do that if you will ask assistance from them but the sense of but the sense of nationality and patriotism has been taken away due to these processes of having a deep tech startup a deep tech uh, deep technology idea and concept that is being pursued by Filipinos and but not that well supported locally. So um, in, on, on our experience, if you are approaching Filipino investors, they are way greedier and um, they are way greedier compared to investors abroad. Because investors abroad, investors in other countries are aware that this will be a huge thing of the future while here in the philippines they we filipinos are not used to seeing things in a huge uh in a huge manner or in a futuristic manner that's the reason why we are having a hindrance of moving forward as a nation so that's the reality of it and uh, orbit x is one of the uh, Orbit X is one of the pioneering companies that must start this type of realization towards our fellow citizens. That we must take bold bets in order for us to help our country to move forward because we are being left behind by other countries. And we must make sure that we are maximizing not just international collaboration but also locally in order for us to make sure that we are not uh, we are not uh, being left behind, again, what I said, by uh, make, other how companies. How can you make the Filipinos care about space and futuristic endeavors? How can you make them excited about it? Well, uh, well in all fairness, um, I can see that there are, uh, there are few people, mm -hmm. there are few Filipinos, rather, that are uh, that are excited for what we are doing they are aware of what we are doing uh and uh we are really grateful because because um on the other side of the equation we still have an audience although that is not that is not uh, that is still not that big we still have a voice in the community. We can still voice out our concerns, but that is uh, that audience is in the bottom of the equation. We are we don't we do not have access to all parts of the equation, and in mathematics, you cannot solve just a piece of the equation. You cannot so you can you cannot find the answer if a part of the equation is missing. And in order for, on, on our part, 
what we are doing is that we are maximizing our presence, especially in social media, because most of our audience are in Generation Z, Gen Zs, and Millennials. So those demographics are we, uh, are predicted because this type uh, this uh, this type of dreams usually do usually come from uh, children yeah young people yeah young people and uh, we are we are using that uh, youthful energy to make sure that uh, we are encouraging enough people to get involved in uh, in this mission of not just going into space but also preserving earth are you hiring young people and training them up or what's the um workforce like and what is it, who is it made up of yeah uh, actually we have interns mm -hmm. here in orbit x mm -hmm. but um the sad part again is that uh, it is really dreadful to consider that the interns are composed of uh, not uh, not uh, engineering students, but composed of interested students. But it is a good start for a country like the Philippines. That's great. So have, you yes. can train them up. So are you training them in engineering? Yes, actually, we are uh, here in uh, here in Orbit X. Uh, our training uh, platform is involved in uh, because they are diverse also they're coming from education background uh, ed education they're coming from economics so what we decided as a team is to train them in different aspects of uh, the industry which is um, programming engineering mathematics science critical thinking so before we uh, before we decide to uh, before we decide to have them uh, have them work on the actual workplace we make sure we are making sure that they are equipped with the uh, basic knowledge this because is um, amazing <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm getting because emotional yeah. like this is great yeah thank you <laughs> keep going keep going <laughs> yeah so yeah we we are doing our best to make sure that they are well equipped at the same time on, on my part i am maximizing my connections in linkedin i am trying to connect with uh with the uh, young astronaut trainees from nasa so that uh, they have a benchmark image of a role model wherein they they are uh, they are being inspired to pursue their own dreams so uh, although um, I, I told the team I, I told the team that if we will be hiring interns from now on I told them that we need to make sure that at least they are interested to be part of what we are doing having technical skills can be learned uh, or uh, having technical skills is not that important. Having that behavior of getting involved, being interested, being passionate of bringing Filipinos and developing countries to space must be the first thing to consider before asking if you have the technical skills. Because if you will ask if you have the technical skills or if the intern has the technical skills to per or to perform the task it will be a hard thing a hard hiring process to consider especially that uh, we do not have uh, we do not have access to a well diverse engineering talent pool with regarding to uh, with, with regards to aerospace industry or the space industry as a whole here in the philippines because we are still starting as a nation and uh, if we will decide to just hire technical people or technical interns we will have difficulties because we have i guess four universities that offers just the surface of astronomy 
So uh, we will have har a hard time if we will prioritize those people that have uh, technical backgrounds or technical uh, education with so regards to be passionate, so that they share the same vision as you. Yes, so you exactly. The workforce want essentially want the same thing and have share the same passion. Therefore, the skills can be acquired and learned, and everyone's on the same page. I, I love that. I do really, exactly. it's just so brilliant, it's so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You give us some background about you. Where are you from? Where in the Philippines are you based? How did you grow up? Um, yeah, I am from, uh, originally I was born in Ozamis City in Mindanao. So we have, if you are aware, we have three major islands here in the Philippines. We have Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So I came from Mindanao, so I was born there. And uh, I, uh, my mom decided to, my mom decided to move in Manila so that I can, uh, I can uh, pursue my education here. So- uh, I've been to Manila, beautiful city. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so I decided to, uh, so we decided to transfer here in Manila and I pursued my education from grade school or from kindergarten or preschool pre up to college. So I stayed here most of my uh, life years here in Quezon City, Metro Manila. And uh, even though my initial interest is to become an, is to become an astronaut, I cannot do that back then because we do not have an astronomy degree or an aerospace engineering degree. And uh, I am from a middle class family. So uh, I do not have, I, 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 I do not have the guts or my mom even, even has no guts to uh, pursue these uh, huge degrees that will take a lot of man, money to uh, pursue. So I, uh, I, uh, I uh, converted or I, uh, I changed my direction and I told my mom that if I, can, uh, if I can pursue medical degree. So again, the concern is uh, financials. So I uh, decided to become the youngest reporter of a radio station here in the Philippines. So I become the youngest uh, radio reporter here in the Philippines at a young age of 15 years old when I was in high school. So I stayed in the so I stayed in the radio station for about fifth, uh, no for about three years. Then I left the radio station to pursue my college degree. So before I decided to pursue my college degree, I have a lot of offers from different universities, but my mom has no guts, even though I have the scholarship grants, Grants, my mom has no guts to uh, to take a bet. What I observe personally is that if you have enough willpower and if you are trying to override your fear every single day, you can basically achieve what you want. So the first thing is to just go out there and pursue what makes you happy yeah. because at the end of the day you're even though you are safe you cannot be happy because you are not pursuing what you really want you have one life so you might as well live it doing what you love instead of yes living exactly someone else's life or living someone else's desires yes exactly and uh like what you said in my own words i uh, i want to say it in a way that we only die once. We must live every day forever. I love so, that. That's so true. Yeah, yeah that's that's uh, that's my uh, uh, mantra in life: to just go out there and seek discomfort. And uh, the only hindrance that we have, not just here in the Philippines, but in the whole world, is that we are letting somebody else to decide our future which is not good for us because according to one American psychologist the uh, 75 of uh, 75 of those people in deathbeds have regrets because they haven't pursued their uh, real self 
or their vision for themselves or their dream uh, their dreams so I'm trying to make sure personally that I am setting a good example for young people here in the Philippines that anything that you want in life if you have enough guts and if you have enough willpower to do it you can make it possible because what separates you from achieving your goal is the fear and like Will Smith always says you must first overcome your fear because fear is not true fear it's is just, just it's a barrier but it's it's not real yeah. you can't touch yes. it you know so yes. you can remove it, it it's not physically yes. there it's inside yes. here yeah. you get it out of here you can go anywhere you can go to space yes, <laughs> yes exactly exactly i like that and uh yeah we need to make sure uh, we need to make sure that we are reaching out to young people and to tell them that your ideas and your dreams deserve to be heard. And uh, actually, when I started Orbit X, I, uh, I personally went to uh, different universities and public high schools here in Metro Manila just to tell them that anything is impossible. A anything is possible, anything even, is though, possible. even though it's <laughs> impossible. Yeah. Anything is possible, like what Mary Poppins said. Yeah, the word itself Anything has is possible, possible in it. So yes, the word exactly. itself, if you break it up, I'm possible. I'm possible, yes, exactly. And uh, we must teach the young people, the, young, the younger generations to pursue how, how mat uh, no matter how hard the vision is, if it will make them happy in the long period of time because we must tell them or teach them to define their own uh, meaning of success because if we if they will if we will depend our definition of success to other people we will not be happy and happiness and happiness is an important thing as a human being and without happiness in my own opinion we cannot be the light that the world needs if time will come that the world is in darkness especially these days yeah. so we need to be the light of the world basically i love that that's beautiful what they, is the yeah. ultimate goal when you go to space first of all we want to make sure that the problem of uh, uh, space junks will be solved we believe in orbit x that in the near future all countries or most of the countries will be involved in space industry mm. so we need to make sure that we are capturing the waste from orbit in order for us to have more uh, to, to, to have no hindrance when we go to space because like what Elon Musk and Virgin Galactic is planning are planning they are planning to bring uh, tourists from one location to, to another they are planning to go to space bring tourists for eight minutes we need to make sure that they uh, that we will have no hindrance in doing such things especially that space is an ambitious thing and one and one uh, space junk will uh, matter in the near future how do you plan to capture the uh, space junk itself uh, actually, um, we are we are observing uh, different things already that I uh, I cannot disclose yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I cannot disclose yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> but no worries. Um, no, 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 not not for not for uh, not for any uh, any uh, secret idea or anything. Mm -hmm. We are trying to make. I am. I am personally trying to make it sure that I am telling you the right thing. Oh, okay. Before, <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> but this is fascinating. Really, really exciting. You've got a mission, and you're focusing on sustainability. But where are you right now, and what do you need? Um, currently, currently we are done with the phase one of our uh, uh, rocket modeling. So we are done with that. We are ready. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. We are done with that. Um, 
now we are uh, entering the actual physical prototyping of our Tamarau engine. Why it is called Tamarau? Because Tamarau is a like a, a small buffalo uh, that is that can be found only here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So uh, we decided to name it Tamarau engine. So uh, we all, we are done with the uh, simulations. So we are now talking to Philippine Space Agency so they will be involved in the actual prototyping stage so that they can also provide manpower for us. And um, How is it fueled? Uh, according to my chief scientific officer, uh, they are still looking at the angle of using, uh, using a solid propellant for now just to test the uh, credibility of the materials that we will be using so uh, but we have but we have the capacity to produce uh, plastic uh, a rocket fuel from plastics so we have that capacity to uh, to do it but uh, for safety purposes uh, we, are, we decided to we decided to go into the easier uh, path just to prove the concept of uh, Filipinos building rockets, uh, going to space. That's so, <laughs> so cool, huh? Just, uh, yeah, <laughs> we just want to prove that first. But yeah, we have uh, we have the capability to uh, create a rocket fuel from plastic and. Uh, the good thing about that, our fuel, uh, our rocket fuel is similar to RP-1 uh, uh, fuel, which is widely used in the industry, even before. So it, it, it has uh, similar uh, properties. At the same time, uh, the cost per liter is just 0 0.1414 US dollars. Oh, wow. That's really so, so if you combine the factor of reusability, fuel sustainability, and uh, other stuff, yeah. you can you can do basically better stuff compared to SpaceX. Mm. So that's what we are trying to do. But we are not trying to compete against SpaceX because uh, Elon Musk is Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> and Dexter Bio is Dexter Bio, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Send it exactly. yourself exactly. too. You're amazing. Thank you, thank you. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, I can't. You're inspiring. My, 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 you know, mind's all boggled in a good way right now. So this is, this is just so incredible. You know, you're sustainable in the way you're doing things. You're young and inspiring to young people. Um, and also those who don't necessarily have engineering degrees as such, you're providing them with the skills as long as they have the passion. I've always believed that if you have the passion for something, then you can learn what you want to learn um, and, and do what you want to do. You can achieve your dreams. You've just got to have the drive. And I, I love your selection process as well. Like I just think what you're doing is so revolutionary and just so inspiring it's so great so this is this is good we need more people like you in the world and you know future space endeavors i, I want to go to space as well one day so <laughs> i'm just so excited yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just really excited about this on so many levels I, I can see that in your linkedin posts <laughs> yeah yeah so i i really i believe that i'm an alien so <laughs> yeah maybe i am an alien too. <laughs> Maybe an, I maybe I'm an alien too. Maybe you are. <laughs> maybe we were sending we from are. another planet to go back and yes. figure out how to go yeah. back. <laughs> yes, exactly. Maybe we are. So we still don't know. We haven't discovered all the things that we should know here in the world. No, I mean, if you, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited because. You know, NASA and, and various other crafts have, are, are exploring the solar system for traces of life on other planets. And, you know, this is just this solar system, just this one. Yeah. Uh, so there's got to be... Uh, are you aware that they recently discovered a life in Venus? Life on yeah. Venus? Yes, uh, 
I guess uh, they are a group of NASA uh, NASA experts that they, they yeah. that discovered these microorganisms uh, on uh, Venus, on the surface oh, of Venus. I think I'm from Venus. You should check it out. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe that's our ancestors. Maybe, maybe. I like <laughs> that. Do you have a date in mind to launch? Oh yeah, uh, we are targeting targeting uh, 2022 mm-hmm. for our first test launch. Test Hopefully, launch. because here in uh, here in space industry, you can predict any a- anything. Yeah. Like everything can be changed if uh, there are faulty uh, engineering uh, methodologies that should be fixed. So hopefully we can reach that uh, goal. Of. Okay, so hopefully we'll see Orbit X with the Filipino flag and the Tamaro engine up in the stratosphere in space in 2022. And are you going to hopefully. be on the rocket or, or not? No, <laughs> I, I can't do that now, but uh, <laughs> let's consider that in the future. Okay. <laughs> let's consider that in the future. Awesome! I'm really excited about your future. Me too, me too. Thank you so much. You're it is a, it is an honor to be part of uh, your interview. I just, I just love and believe in everything you're doing. You know, it's just so incredible, really. It, it really is. So I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you in all the ways you need and want. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you have uh, anything in mind that you want to discuss. Just reach out via LinkedIn. I'm uh, I'm one chat away. If you want to share insights, oh, I probably will. But I might write in coding lang- alien language. May- but maybe you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you, Dexter. You as well. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a beautiful day, and I'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.